Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am your host, Elder Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And so we would love to stay connected with you as partners in prayer. There is no financial obligation to become a partner in prayer with us. The only thing that we require of you is that you send us an email. Our email address is aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. Send us your prayer request. Things you would like for us to touch and agree with you in the name of Jesus that his will may be done in your life on earth as it is in heaven whether it is for healing deliverance if you're standing in the gap for someone our unity is in the spirit and not of the flesh the word of God truly truly says and we believe it we stand on it it is one of our founding scriptures here pray ye one for another that ye may be healed and that is over in James 5:16. It also tells us that the pray, the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And that's why we are here. To keep you lifted in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want you healed in your body. We want you set free in your spirit. We want your minds changed, your heart changed so you can receive the word of God that you may learn of the law of God and that you may apply it to your life and in turn teach others. Once again, our email address is aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com Just a few things that are coming up. We are super excited about what God is doing in this season. On behalf of You'll Overcome Ministries and Lee's Mobile Games, they are presenting Breaking the Silence of Autism, Autism in Children of Color, April the 6th, 2019, 2 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m., located at the Chester H. Ferguson Event Center. The address is 1610 North Tampa Street, Tampa, Florida, 33602. There will be vendors on site. There will also be speakers on site to teach us about autism and children of color. Sponsorship for this event is also available if you would like to attend. Please contact telephone number 813-377-6725 also if you log on to facebook look for you'll overcome ministries incorporated for more details during our time with you last week we started a series where is your faith and we're looking at the apostles they started off just like you and i men, fishermen. Today we're going to take a look at, uh, we're going to look at Saul. And Saul was very, very controversial. Uh, we have, we actually, we have Prophetess Yolanda Lee George on the air. She's listening in. Uh, awesome, awesome woman of God. Uh, please connect with her ministry, You'll Overcome Ministries. You can locate it on Facebook as well as YouTube, uh, where she has uh, shared with us an awesome, awesome testimony. She is an author as well, so you can check out her books uh, at You'll Overcome Ministries Incorporated. Today we're talking about Saul, and, and Saul was like many of us. We, we have a zeal but is that zeal necessary is it necessarily to the things of God and when it's not projected to the truth and the manner of God well I'm sad to tell you but that is self-righteousness 
because what you were doing is not lined up with his will. And so as we look at Saul, Saul was well educated. Uh, Saul came from a family of, of well education and it tells me here that um, with his citizenship, he was, uh, he was a Jewish Pharisee and uh, he also had some uh, Roman uh, connection. It says Paul's father was no doubt Jewish, but must have brought or been given Roman citizenship. And we do know that at an appointed time when he Paul was going through persecution and he was going through trial, he reached back for, uh, hey, uh, I'm a Roman. And, and, and so he utilized those things. But before he became Paul, he was known as Saul. And he actually thought what he was doing was pleasing unto God. Tradition could have us thinking that what we are doing is pleasing unto God. But what happens is the day that you hear my voice, hearten not your hearts. The day that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you then have access to the Holy Spirit, who is there to reveal unto you all the mysteries of truth, to lead and guide you and to help you to understand and to open up your eyes. And that's why we, we yet pray for the spirit of discernment. We yet pray for, for our eyes to be open and that our ears are open in the spiritual realm. Because one thing that I've learned in my life, there was upon a time that uh, because uh, I I'd published a few books and I had done some things publicly, uh, I decided there were some places I wouldn't go. But it had nothing to do with me acknowledging and honoring God with what I did. I just didn't want my name associated with some things of the world if you would say but one day the Holy Spirit told me that just because I no longer went to the clubs or I no longer did this I no longer drank I, I no longer entertained and gossip because I didn't want my name tangled up in some stuff that I wasn't honoring God I was yet in self-righteousness now I choose not to be amongst those things because I don't want it to defile this temple. Saul taught us through his conversion. There was upon a time in Saul's life that, that, that Saul was one there and, and he, was, he was sitting there. Uh, he was watching the stoning of Stephen. And that's over in Acts, the seventh chapter. At this time, Stephen, one of the disciples, was he was talking about Jesus Christ and 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 how they had him amongst them and and how he taught and healed and did miracles and how they crucified him and hung him on the cross. But it was a part of God's plan. And here we have educated souls. See, sometimes our education, we're so educated in the carnal sense that we're missing the Holy Spirit. Because we're thinking in our carnality. And here was Saul. He was watching. Now, mind you, he thought what he was doing was honorable unto God. Here are these disciples, and they're teaching that Jesus is the son of the living God. Well, that's not what the Pharisees had been teaching. And so Saul thought that they were blaspheming and that they were telling lies mm -hmm. and that they were not teaching what Moses had taught, what had been sent down through generations once again, uh, let us be careful about what we trinkle down from generation to generation. Make sure that it lines up fully with what the Word of God says. See, we can't take part out and only want to teach and insert 
what we want you to grab hold of. We must serve the whole lump. And at this time, it was a great persecution of the church. And let me tell you something. Uh, we are in a, in a huge, huge persecution of the church even until this day. There is a character assassination against the body of Christ. What you say is being scrutinized with a fine tooth comb. It is being raked over. That's why we have to be careful that we are hearing from God, not unto self-righteousness, but unto righteousness of the glory of God. And so here, uh, Saul, and I'm going to go over to the 8th chapter. It says, And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women committed them to prison. Because they were speaking the truth. They didn't blaspheme. They didn't talk against what Moses was teaching. There was more to be taught. And a lot of times when someone does not agree because they haven't come into the truth or the knowledge of Jesus Christ and you're teaching truth, they will come against it. The enemy will come against it. He will try to block it. He will try to shut it down. And this is where Saul was. And then I come over to Acts the ninth chapter. And I absolutely love this experience. I love it because at this very moment, while he's out to continue to persecute the church, our Lord and Savior steps in. While we are on our road to self-righteousness, condemning each other on how we dress and how we act, and you're not holy enough, and you don't pray long enough and you don't fast long enough and it's all about self-righteousness but there is a spirit of correction that will come in and put us in order that's why the, the word of God says touch not my anointed and cause my prophet no harm who are you to deem how long one fast and how long they pray when they've consecrated themselves and they can get a prayer through when they are obedient to the things of God they've learned how to get into the presence of the Lord and so it might not take them longer than someone else who has not learned how to get into the presence of the Lord that self-righteousness who am I to say how long your skirt should be or whether or not you can wear pants if the Holy Spirit which he will teach us how to dress is not convicting a person I can't stand at the door at the at the church and say well you can't come in because today you know today we should be in all white and the skirt should be at your ankle and because you have on blue you can't come in who am I who am I and so here we have Saul in chapter 9 of Acts it says and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priests and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he 
found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as I was just reading that, and this is really, really getting so good to me, it takes me back to uh, the letters uh, over when it came to rebuilding of the wall. And there you have Ezra and the prophets in their building, and you have the spirit of frustration that worked through uh, Tobiah. And and Sabala and 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 what they said was, well, uh, who told you you can build this wall? Give us your name so that we can put it in writing. And we can write letters. Who told you you can do this? When you are on an assignment, the enemy doesn't want you to complete it, and so he will bring some spirits of frustration. To hinder the work well why are you doing this and and who gave you permission and 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 just because you weren't included in on the details you want to know who gave you permission and authority because it did not come by you who are you this is God ordained but once again, uh, even Nehemiah said, you know, I don't have time to come down from the work to explain to you what God called me to do. You take it up with God. Saul wanted letters. And it says, and he journeyed, uh, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me he calls you by name why are you meddling in what I told that man a woman of God to do and see here's what I've come to understand if we understand our assignment, we won't have time to figure out what you're doing. You know, the world has this saying, stay in your lane. That's really what that means. If I am focused on what he called me to do, I don't have time to try to figure out what you're doing over there and why you're doing it and in what method you do it. And I have an opinion on how you should do it. And when I am so busy over in your lane, guess what? My lane is neglected. And I've given the enemy an, a, a wide door to come in through, through my lane because I'm not on my guard. I'm not on my job. I don't even know what my job is. My God, I don't even know what he called me to do. I got the confusion of watchmen on the wall that I'm watching your business. But watchmen on the wall actually means watching in the spiritual realm so that I can warn you of the forces of the enemy that is trying to infiltrate the work of God. And so we have our we have our assignments confused. He says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? See, let me tell you something. When he calls you, see, the enemy is not going to stop you in your tracks from causing havoc. He might increase your method, but he's not going to stop you. And this lets me know that Saul recognized the voice of the Lord. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecute. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Let me tell you something. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against this. I don't care how hard you kick. I don't care what lie you tell. I don't care what word you might spread. When it is God ordained, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Why? Because it shall accomplish that which he sent it out to do. He said, if I said it, it shall accomplish what I sent it out to do. Just as the rain fall from the heaven and it gives a, a, a seed to the sower so that the sower may have seed to sow and to feed, his word shall accomplish. So no matter what one may do, in their self-righteous state 
God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? See what you want me to do. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Let me tell you something about Saul. And I know I need to take a break, but this is really, really getting good. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you. When you receive the word of truth, the word of promise, he said, Arise and go into the city. I'm not going to stop you from going into Damascus. That's where you were headed and I got more plans for you. See, you were going to cause havoc. Keep going in that same direction because I've sent the angel ahead of you to pave the way. I wanted you there anyway. Your mindset I was going to say I was going there for one reason, but God has greater plans. He has greater plans. Your motive might have been one thing. But in the midnight hour, God will turn it around. What the enemy sought out for evil, God will turn it around and make it good. Once again, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. We'll be back in just a moment. We would like to invite you to visit us on our website, www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Via the website, you have the opportunity to check out our School of Ministry and Mentoring programs. We have courses such as The Promises of God, The Components of the Old and New Covenant, Discovering Your Ministry and Spiritual Gifts, a breakthrough in my life, a guide to spiritual growth, the writer's launch, roadmap to self-publishing, mentoring with motivational speaker Angel Ferguson, and purpose, goals, and dreams. Also on our website, you can check out our publishing division, our broadcasting schedule for radio as well as television ministry, Hope and Truth Magazine, and our bookstore. Once again, our website is www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. If you are in the Tampa Bay area and looking for a place of worship, I'd like to invite you to True Life Community Worship Center. The address is 7402 North 56th Street, Building 600, Tampa, Florida, 33617 under the leadership of Senior Pastor Calvin Green and Pastor Angela Green. Every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock a.m. is True U University. Morning worship, 1030 a.m. Every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. is Bible study. While in the Bridgeton, New Jersey area, please visit Faith Outreach Deliverance Church under the leadership of Apostle Roma D. Allen Sr. and Pastor Lily, Lillian C. Allen. The address is 100 South Pine Street, Bridgeton, New Jersey, 08302. Sunday mornings, 9.45 a.m. is Sunday School. 11 o'clock a.m. is morning service. Wednesdays, 7 o'clock p.m. is Bible study. And on Fridays is 7 o'clock p.m. evangelistic services. If you would like for us to mention your church, your ministry, your organization, or upcoming event, please feel free to email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. If you are just tuning in, you have tuned into The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson, and we're talking about where's your faith. Uh, we're looking at the apostles. We're looking at Paul today. Paul is a little different from the other ones. Because Paul was, he was taught, Paul was well educated, he thought he was doing the will of God, but in fact, he was walking in self-righteousness. We've all been there whether we want to admit it or not. But on his way to Damascus, one day, he was stopped 
by the Spirit. It has happened to all of us in different scenarios, whether it's in service, some of us even in our homes, on our jobs, in our vehicles. The Holy Spirit will stop you in your tracks. You, uh, we've all experienced it. We are breathing out cruelty and we are breathing out threatenings. And we, we you know, uh, I know I'm saved, but I, 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 uh, I don't agree with what they're doing. Before you air out what you don't agree on, pray. One thing I find out about we as a people, what we don't understand, we will talk against. We will criticize it. And it's because we don't understand it. Because we haven't gotten to that area of grace yet. But you keep living and you keep growing in the grace and the knowledge of God. And, and little by little, one day you're going to come into this realization that you know what? What they were saying 10 years ago or even last week. God is going to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal that very same thing to you if you remain in his presence. But just because you don't understand something, just because it might seem new to you, don't talk against it. Don't kick against it. Try the Spirit by the Spirit. And when all glory is given unto God, what what, what is the motive of fighting against it? If we are all supposed to be building the body of Christ until the edification of the body, what are you fighting against? I don't like that new praise and worship music. Uh, I don't like their method of ministry. There's ministry in the word of God. What are you kicking against? I don't recognize their level of tongue. Uh, who are you? Don't fight against the things of God. Get an understanding. Lean not unto your own unto your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so you know what? Be honest with God. God, you know, something happened today and I don't understand it. Something new is happening in the ministry and I don't understand it. And sit still and be quiet and he'll reveal it to you. He will. I know he will. Paul was instructed to continue on to Damascus and he was there three days you know there's something about those three days and he couldn't eat and he couldn't sleep his eyes were open my god that's a whole nother teaching right there having your eyes open yet you cannot see you can't see spiritually because once again you are in a spirit of carnality but right here, God had Saul just where he wanted him. And it's going to happen for you too. God is going to get to a place where he has you just where he wants you. Don't you worry. Just where he wants you. He's going to bring some revelation to your spirit. And that what was murmured against. He's going to shut it down. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Paul is an awesome, awesome example. That God will stop you in your tracks. When he says enough is enough. And I need my will to be done. He'll stop you in your tracks. And before you know it, where you were once so disagreeable, you will find yourself in an agreement. You will become a front runner for Christ. Apply this word to your life today. Once again, put into prayer what you don't understand. Don't talk and murmur against it. Pray about it. Pray about it. Let God have his way. And if it's not real, God will shut that down too. But it's not your job to do that. I absolutely love you here on The Balance of Life. We're going to continue tomorrow with this series, Where Is Your Faith? And we're going to look at another one of the apostles. 
it's time that we grow into spiritual maturity and as you grow we're growing with you you are not alone so stay encouraged encouraging others along the way please feel free to visit us online at angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com have a blessed blessed day